Hey students, Pastor Brent here. Wanted to give you an update as to what's happening around here. Hopefully you've been, uh, you and your family know uh, the latest updates that has been happening with our church. If you don't know, go to gcsarita.org. gcsarita.org, we've just, we've been releasing stuff as to what the, uh, what the plans are for our church and coming back together, reopening, all of that kind of stuff. So make sure you're in the know, go to our website, and you can find all the information there if you don't know. Hey, I'm looking forward to it. It looks like we're gonna get, be able to start getting back together really soon in smaller groups, but we'll make it work. We'll be announcing how that all works um, as we go. Um, I know this week will be a big one. We'll let you know. Um, we're gonna do some small group gatherings on Sundays. And so I'm really looking forward to those, be able to see small groups together, get to hang out with your small group leader. Uh, some of you are gonna get new small group leaders, which is gonna be exciting. You're gonna get to see a fresh face um, in small group gatherings moving forward. Uh, but today we are gonna play a game. I know, sad. <laughs> if you've been uh, a winner before, uh, thank you for playing. Uh, today I want you to really focus on your mom. If you've already said Happy Mother's Day, awesome, you're doing great. But don't forget, you can say it again and again. And you can find different ways to make sure she knows that you are appreciate that you appreciate her. So that's my challenge for you today. We're going to continue in our series, and I hope that you are prepared and hope that uh, you got your Bible, maybe something to take some notes. And then um, at the end today, uh, it's just the video is just going to end. So I won't come back. I know that we've got lots of um, stuff on down the pipeline for you to know. Um, and so be checking out our socials and our websites and you will find that there. Hey, you guys have a great week. I'll see you guys later. Hi friends, my name is Adriana. Don't like coffee, don't like tea. I'm not a real grown up, but this morning it's not even nine o'clock yet and I already have myself a milkshake, so come at me. Have you ever spoken up about something and it ended up being totally awkward or hurtful or embarrassing? I mean, you didn't mean any harm, but the way the words just came like spilling out of your mouth, just like bleh, just ended up doing more harm than good. I mean, I think we can all say we've been there, right? I know I have. So when we were younger, my little sister started making a bunch of really unhealthy, unwise, kind of stupid decisions. I mean, she was skipping school a lot. She was hanging out with people who didn't really know what was best for her. And she was doing all kinds of things that could cause her pain further down the road. Now, I didn't know when or how to speak up to her because she was my sister. She knew me better than anybody. And she knew all the ways that I had messed up. And I was just so afraid that she would turn around and say, no, 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 no. You are not perfect. You do not get to tell me what to do. So when I finally did confront her, it was in this moment of just like, oh, I was so frustrated with her. And instead of talking to her with love and compassion, I just spoke out of my own hurt. And my words didn't make her realize that she was making bad decisions. I mean, I didn't stop to make sure that my words were full of love and concern. And so all they did was make her feel ashamed and awkward. And in that moment, it was like speaking up just made the situation way worse. Now, if you've been there, and you know how this feels, right? I mean, just like, just, of course, you didn't have these bad intentions when you said those things. I mean, we were just sharing our opinion, right? We're just being open and honest. But when that opinion causes awkwardness or embarrassment or even hurt, it can make us wonder if it was ever a good idea to speak up in the first place. Now, as bad as those awkward moments can be, I think they're probably not even the moments that we fear the most about speaking up. I think most often, the place that a lot of us run into this fear of sharing our opinions is actually with our friends. Now, maybe you're like, whoa, 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 Adriana, pause. I can talk to my friends about 
anything. Well, that's because I'm not talking about the everyday easy stuff you share with your friends, like who your favorite singer is, or what your favorite Disney movie is, or what gross stuff you like putting on your pizza, like Oreos or hamster food, I don't know. I'm talking about the hard stuff, the difficult stuff, the stuff that makes speaking up or speaking out really complicated. Now, think about the last time you saw a friend making a bad choice. Maybe they were hanging out with the wrong crowd, a group of people who were really influencing them to make not so great decisions. Or maybe they were dating someone who was pressuring them to do something that they shouldn't and your friend was slowly giving in. Now, maybe they were disobeying or disrespecting their parents. They were lying and arguing and getting super angry all of the time at home. Maybe you saw them stop caring about school or homework or about showing up to class. Maybe you knew they were watching shows they weren't supposed to or sneaking around the parental controls on the internet or posting inappropriate content on secret social media accounts. We've all been there too, right? I mean, we've all had a friend do something or be on the verge of doing something that we know is really, 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 really not gonna be good for them. And when that happens, if you're anything like me, you probably wanna say something. You feel like you should speak up, but you aren't sure what to say or how to say it or if you should say anything at all. It's times like these when we start to make excuses for ourselves. We tell ourselves things like, you know what, what my friends are doing is no big deal. Other times we tell ourselves, if I speak up, I might make my friend mad or even ruin our friendship. So I'm just not gonna say anything at all. Sometimes we don't speak up to a friend because we think, what can I even say to this person? I mean, I have done the exact same thing. Who would even listen to me if I spoke up about this? Another excuse we might tell ourselves is, that is really, really, really none of my business. I mean, if it has nothing to do with you and it doesn't affect you, can you actually say anything about it? Maybe you've convinced yourself not to speak up to a friend because you thought, I don't think they're gonna listen anyway. So speaking up, it's just, it's not even gonna make a difference. Or maybe you didn't speak up honestly to a friend because you know that you're not supposed to gossip and, and it kind of felt like gossip. And even if you just brought it up to them, wasn't that doing the whole like unwholesome talk thing that you're not supposed to do and but you were doing it and it, uh, what, are you, what are you gonna do? Another excuse you may have heard for not speaking up to a friend is because you thought, I already told them what I think. Do I really need to tell them again and again and again? You are not alone in those feelings. We've all been in situations where we knew we should speak up, but we made excuses for why we didn't. While I think it's normal to feel that way, we're gonna learn today why that's probably not the best choice we can make. Now, let me pause here and say that I know this isn't the case for all of us. I mean, some of you have zero problem speaking up and making your voice heard. You aren't at all shy about telling your friends what you think about whether or not K-pop is the best pop or if Baby Yoda is kind of cute but also a little bit ugly. Now. Don't check out here because trust me, this is for you too. When it comes to speaking up in situations like these, we all have hangups. Now, maybe for you, speaking up is a struggle and you constantly question if it's worth the risk. Or maybe speaking up comes easily, but you don't always offer your opinion in, let's say, the nicest way. Either way, there has to be a better way to speak up and share our opinions when we think they are gonna be helpful to someone that we care about, right? So this question of how to find the best way to speak up isn't a new one. About 2,000 years ago, a guy named Paul wrote a letter to a church in a place called Galatia. Now, part of that letter addressed this very issue. Paul wrote this letter because he cared about the believers in that church so much and he knew they were just trying to figure out how to live in the best way but honestly y'all they were struggling because sometimes knowing how to live in the best way can be confusing and that's why Paul put pen to paper to help his friends out so let's take a look at some of what he wrote dear brothers and sisters if another believer is overcome by some sin you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path 
Now, even though Paul addressed this passage to people who lived a long time ago, I think we can all learn something from this. It doesn't matter if you grew up in the church or if this is your first time here, this can apply to all of us. Paul addressed this passage to fellow Christian believers because they were his friends. He cared about them. He cared about what happened to them. And because of that, he didn't want them to make choices that hurt themselves and hurt others. I think we can all relate to that feeling, right? I mean, when we care about someone else, we want what's best for them. We don't want them to hurt themselves or to hurt others. And sometimes that means we have to speak up when we see them heading in that direction. So what did Paul say we should do? Well, according to this verse, when we see friends who are struggling with things that might hurt them or they're moving down a path that's gonna lead them to something harmful, it's important that we do what we can to help them get back on the right path. A lot of times that includes speaking up. Now, I get that this is super hard for a lot of us. I mean, like we said earlier, there are so many reasons not to say something that we know our friends don't necessarily want to hear. We're afraid it's gonna hurt their feelings or upset them or damage the relationship but I think in situations where our friends are walking towards something that could be really bad news for their lives and for their futures, we have to care more about the person than about the relationship. We have to care enough about our friend that we are willing to speak up even if it means that our friendship is a little bruised in the process. All right, to start, let's just try this. Put yourself in their shoes. Now, if you were the one who was walking a path that everybody else saw was gonna potentially be really bad news for you, would you want someone to tell you? Would you want a friend to stop you or help you or point out that what they saw had the potential to hurt you? Would you want them to have the courage to have a difficult conversation with you? I know I would. Well, when you see a friend in that same place, you have the chance to be that person for them. You have the opportunity to speak up and help them move back towards the right path. Now, like we said, there are some of you who are like, um, I am not afraid to speak up. I even kind of like telling people they're wrong. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. You are super wrong. Well, look back at the verse again. Paul didn't just tell us to help our friends get back on the right path. He told us how we're supposed to do it, with gentleness and humility. It is not just about what you say. It's about how you say it. You need to speak the truth, but you need to do it in the right way and with the right heart. Paul says to gently and humbly help the friends you see struggling down the wrong path. That means speaking with kindness and with love and with encouragement instead of anger and frustration and judgment. It means caring more about the person you're speaking to than the fact that you're right. So speak up, but do it with kindness. Be helpful and encouraging and loving. In other words, use kindness and love when you speak up. Now, when we approach tough conversations with love and kindness, it will change both what we say and how we say it. We'll speak up because we love others and we want what's best for them. And we'll do it in love, using words that encourage and rebuild and help our friends get back on the right path. Remember, use kindness and love when you speak up. So the next time you find yourself in a situation where you think you might need to speak up, I want you to ask yourself a couple of things. One, what does it look like to love my friend and show kindness in the situation? Maybe it's in the way you talk to them about it the actual word that you use to have that conversation. And maybe it's in using a gentle tone over a harsh one. Maybe it's choosing to talk about it only with that friend instead of with a bunch of other people. And maybe it's simply agreeing to pray for them or offer them continued encouragement when you see them making good choices or reminding them that you love them no matter what. And maybe it's not saying anything until you can figure out how to say it in a gentle and humble way. Whatever it is, before you speak, consider what it would look like to show the other person love in that conversation. Two, what would I want? Put yourself in their shoes. If this was you, would you want someone to talk to you about the issue? How would you want them to talk to you when they did? In other words, how would you want someone to show you love and kindness in this conversation? Think about that and try to do the same for the friends around you who need your love in the same way. So this week, keep this in mind. Use kindness and love when you speak out. And as you head out, think about this. What's one thing that keeps me from speaking up or speaking out in love? 
and cut. 